Well folks, today we're on Mr Chippy's bench. We're going to make this project from August 1982 out of Everyday Electronics. So you may have already seen my review on that magazine which was suggested to me by one of the viewers who'd made one of these at the time. So the wonderful thing about this is it plugs into any radio instead of it being an integral part which isn't really ideal because you start having to cut wires and things like that. So we've had a box of parts arrive because we had to order some parts for a customer. Um, Mr Chippy, can you pull out of that bag, that box, the 3300 microfiber capacitors which are for the customer? Good, thank you very much. That's that solved. So, getting the order up to get lower price in, in postage, that's what we've done. So, would you like to tip all those out and uh, to tip the bill out? We've got that enormous box, that's only so it doesn't dance along the floor. They can go back in then bit by bit as we pick out what we need. So, what earth have we got there? I've got a 9 volt battery. Uh, we want one. want one? Yes. It's all about price breaks. So we've got a, a, a two big box, which is what I want. Right. A battery holder. Some, what I'm not going to say Vero board because it isn't made by Vero, it's cheapo board. One of those. They go back in there because we don't know what we order those for from somewhere else. Uh, what else have we got? All these old capacitors, of course, will be going on the uh, thing. Diodes, capacitors, transistors, more. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else needs. One tant? Yeah, there's a tant. And what? Oh, that's it. There we are. I'll move this box out of the way. Right. So the first thing we need to do is to cut the Vera board, which isn't Vera. I'll bring the camera over. So what they've got here, there is. If you get that out of the the packet, please, and then we'll kind of put it on like. So you've got the strips on it, going that way instead of doing printed circuits this is the cheap way of doing it and so it's intended to go that way what they want you to do this is the component side they want you to break the track at that point so you've got the coordinates there so it's the third row down I think it's the tenth across is where we put a hole or put a, a break in the track so I think are we going to cut that to size first do you think yeah yeah we'll do that we'll come back on the camera Right, so here's the progress. So we've got the resistors in, we've got the transistors in, we've got two of the six capacitors in, and if you'd just like to turn that round, um, so I'll zoom in on that because he's put the the crack track, the the, the break. There's one break. Can you point that out? Yes. Yeah. And we've used a three millimeter drill for that. You can buy various spot face cutters. Uh, we do have one, but uh, you, you know, it's in a toolbox in another room. So that's where we are so far. So we've got to go and take a car for its MOT, which is something you do in the UK. And uh, we'll be back in a bit. So a few days later, we've uh, recommenced with this. I think uh, Mr. Chippy's put a couple of wires on since then. Uh, we're waiting for some screen lead. I've got a reel of it somewhere, but you know, where's that somewhere? Sorted half a metre off eBay. So Mr Chippy's now put a four pin plug on that lead and we've wired it up Cybernet. Just got the RS um, screw kit out there, nut and bolt kit, and he's just fitting the fuse holder, the fuse holder, that's a <laughs> battery holder, <laughs> into the bottom and then the printed circuit board uh, will go to one side. We've drilled the initial pilot holes for the switch, the front socket and the lead coming out of the back. So we'll read you on it in a bit. Okay, this should be the final session on this now. If Mr. Chippy would like to tilt that towards the camera, I'll just uh, make sure we're on the thing. I've uh, been wiring the switch up. Now, something we've noticed on this, the whole thing's been wired originally for great, as in Fidelity 1000 G Col 868. So we've had to swap the wiring round for Cybernet. So that was a lot of people. We'll, that will have caught them by surprise because what the author says in the video 
is this, I've wired it for standard, but there's a lot of radios that aren't that standard. Well, standard really is Cybernet, and so he's wired it for great. So you just need to be aware of that. You need to know uh, what, what wire goes where. And if I just tell you, he's wired it so that pin one is receive, or in fact, pin one is audio. He's wired it so that pin two is transmit, and in fact, pin four is transmit. He's wired it so that pin three is audio, and in fact, pin one is audio, and finally, he's wired it for common stroke braid being pin four, and in fact, that needs to be number two pin. Now, if I hold that in front of the camera, it might just focus. That's what we're achieving. One, figure one. And that, figure four, is what he's done. So that needs altering if you're making one of these. Unless you want to make it for great and then make adapter leads. Right, we'll move on a bit. Okay, so it's finished. I have to admit we did try it. So he's put the uh, bolts down. We could have cut the bolts off short, but, we, you know, we didn't. Put a battery in that. It's all wired up. We've got off for bypass and I'll start again. Up for bypass and down for on. Now in the UK, down for on is normal. I know other countries it can be the other way around. So we've plugged the Midland base station mic and we're going to plug this into the base station like we just did do and then we'll do a demonstration. Uh, it actually comes to on receive as well, which is, which is okay. But I think it says so in the blurb. Whilst Mr. Chippy, Mr. Chippy puts that on, it's around uh, the transistor 3 section and I'll put a link once again, so we've got transistor 3 there, I'll put a link to this article so that you can download it for yourself. I don't need to explain uh, how this works because it's in great detail in here. But basically the capacitors are, there's some capacitors and a resistor around transistor 3 and with those values as stated it's a 1.5 kilohertz tone which is absolutely right. So there we go. So has Mr Chippy got any input? No. No? It works. So we're going to be using this on our on the air test on Cybernet sets because it's been noted that when we're at the five mile point on low power and I can't be heard, it could be useful to have a Roger bleep. We had a really, really weedy Roger bleep, didn't we, on a set the other day? Oh, the new one, the intake, wasn't it? Yeah. It's the right thread today. Are they tap tight so you're actually doing the tap as you go? No, they could be, yeah. Yeah. I think I'll do it with this. Yeah. I'll do it with this. Oh. Aldi or little? Uh, I'll do this one. Other German supermarkets are available. Good. You're going to carry on and on and on. <laughs> yeah, is. that one's not quite. He is. Quite. <laughs> so we'll get some labels on that and say what it is and all that. The other thing is, um, we were going to be a bit. We were going to do a cable grommet, but uh, we haven't done. Um, but anyway, we're going to have a demonstration. So I'm going to. Mr. Chip is going in the test car. We'll get the two videos combined. Tango 21 test. Tango 21 working. Let me know when you want to start recording. Yep, Roger. Um, if you want to get ready. Roger that. We're now recording. Right, so people will be able to plonk this unit to the side of the radio. Lucky it is a bit heavier because uh, the curl on the mic from where I'm sat uh, is already dragging it across where it is. So I'm going to switch it on on the next over. Yep, roger that. Tango 21 testing with the roger bleep over. Yep, it went bleep. Good, well, we'll do a few more overs and uh, are you on the hard standing or are you somewhere else? I'm right outside, just parked in the drive. Roger on that, that's fine. Well, that concludes the little test, and our Roger Bleep works exactly as intended. Over. Roger that. 
Okay, ten ten. Ten ten. Right, so people will see I've plonked this unit at the side of the radio. It's lucky it is a bit heavier because uh, the curl on the mic from where I'm sat uh, is already dragging it across as, uh, where it is. So I'm going to switch it on on the next over. Yep, roger that. Tango 21 testing with the Roger Bleep over. Yep, it went bleep. Good, well, we'll do a few more overs and uh, are you on the hard standing or are you somewhere else? I'm right outside, just parked in the drive. Roger on that, that's fine. Well, that concludes the little test and our Roger Bleep works exactly as intended. Over. Roger that. Okay, 10 10. So you'll notice it comes through on receive as well, which is mentioned in the article. That's actually quite useful. <laughs> um, right, there you are. It works, and as I say, 1982 article. I just like to put together some of these silly little things. I don't even like Roger Bleeps, but we do have that use, and it has been noted that when we're at that five mile point there are times when on 400 milliwatts we can't hear anything and we might just hear the roger bleep and that would be a useful thing so as i say subsequent cybernet 134 wired sets so i'll start again subsequent sets which are wired as cybernet and that would include the midland 3001 2001 and so on there's a lot of sets wired that way the communicator and our 440dx and so on but sets about the roger bleeps we'll plug that in uh, just for that added bit of uh, entertainment. So there we go. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.